of approaching your royal throne. Father, as we continue in this service tonight, we want you to be the speaker of the hour. We want the Holy Ghost to anoint the message. We want the Holy Ghost to get a hold of the messenger. And we want the Holy Ghost to anoint the ears of the listeners. We want your divine presence here tonight. Heavenly Father, we want you to let heaven's computer feed us as we pour out, pour in. Bless us, Lord. Keep us in touch with heaven. Give us the strength that we need and the wisdom to deliver it, and we'll give you the praise and the glory forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our subject tonight is the glory and what it costs to keep it. Did you hear what I said? I said the glory and what it costs to keep it. I mean to keep the glory. Now, Jesus has always been used to glory. When he took the book out of the hand of God, and there was no one in heaven or in earth or under the sea that could open the book and read it and look on it, there stood a lamb, as though he had been slain, thank you, from the foundation of the world. And all the angels in heaven Worship him and begin to say, Worthy is the Lamb. And begin to praise God. When he came on earth as a baby, the angels, God turned the angels loose and they filled the sky. It was a notable thing when a child was born of royalty that they would have heralds. But God turned his angels loose for his son. And they sung glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace and goodwill toward men. So you see folks, God has always been used to glory. Christ is used to it. In the 17th chapter of John, he said, I want, Father, I would that they would see the glory that I had with thee before the world was. So you see, he's been used to glory. And so it's befitting that the church be glorified that there be glory in the church. Nevertheless, the devil is trying to hide the glory. And the devil is trying to steal it. And the devil don't want the saints to magnify God and give him the glory that is due him. And we're going to talk to you tonight on the thought, the glory and what it costs to keep it. It means something to have glory in your midst. Under the law, the children of Israel had the Ark of the Covenant. It was a sign or a symbol of the presence of God, was it not? And when the Philistines came along and Israel was weak and their priest was dim, his eyes were dim, and the light was about to go out, and God stepped down and got him a little child to retain and to maintain the glory in the temple. Eli was old and heavy and weak and would not restrain his sons. Is that correct? He wouldn't restrain them. And they were in there when the Ark of the Covenant wasn't with them and the Philistines were upon them and they were scared. They went and got the Ark of the Covenant and the sons was even shouting. And they'd been committing fornication with the, some of the women in the church and had the nerve to shout. You know, there's a boldness now, a false boldness in the world today. But God forbid it be in the church of God. False boldness. The foolish and the wise. Amen. Those foolish went forward with oil just like the wise. That's false boldness. You hear me? When you know you haven't got the oil, when you know you haven't got the good, and going on just like you got it, that'll hinder the glory. And Eli's daughter-in-law, when she heard the news, the grim announcement that her husband had gotten killed and her father-in-law had fell off the seat and died and broke his neck. And she was just about to have a child. And the word says she didn't regard that bearing the child. But before she died, she realized, she knew, she had seen glory. But you know what she said? She said, the glory is departed. 
the glory is departed. Amen. And so tonight we're going to try to show you by the word of God the glory and what it costs to keep it. In Jeremiah, the second chapter, Brother Ron, begin reading at the first verse and read through the 13th. There's some good fishing in there. I got out of it more than I ever got out of it in my life. Wonderful. Two and one. Two and one, Jeremiah. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. Yes, it came. Listen, don't you like preachers? Don't you like for the word of God to come unto you? All right. Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying. Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying. Thus said the Lord. The Lord said this. All right. I remember thee. I remember thee talking about Israel, talking about the children of Israel, all right? The kindness of thy youth. I remember Israel when you were young, when you were tender, when you were pure, when you were walking up rightly with God. I remember you. Listen, God remembers us tonight. He remembers our walk. He remembers how we preach the gospel. He remembers that last message. He remembers that prayer you pray. God remembers. All right. Pray for me, saints. I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. Yes. The love of thy espousal. Oh, I remember the love of thy espousal because I had espoused you to one wife. I remember the love that you had for your wife. Amen. The church. All right. When thou wentest after me in the wilderness. Oh, you loved me so you went after me. Isn't that something? What kind of talk is that? Isn't that beautiful? You went after me. That was a church in the wilderness. He went after God. All right? She went after God. All right? In a land that was not sown. All right. In a land that was not sown. Now, I got something out of this in studying it. In the wilderness, there was nothing that had been sown. There was no wheat. There was no olive yards. There were no vineyards. There wasn't nothing. It was just barren land. Everything wild, nothing but brown and it desert. Nothing, the ground wasn't fit for nothing but graves. But listen, God led his children through that place. He said where nothing had been sown, all right? No corn, no barley, no wheat, no oats, nothing, all right? Israel was holiness unto the Lord. Amen, even though the wilderness was wild and there was nothing sown there. Amen, Israel was holy. Glory be to God when she come out of Egypt and he took her to the wilderness. She was holy. All right. And the first fruits of his increase. And the first fruits of his increase. That Jewish nation was the first fruit of his increase. Amen. But the harvest was going to come on after a while. And the, the harvest didn't come until the Gentiles come in. All right. All that devour him shall offend. All right. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Listen, they were God's heritage. God smiled upon them. He fed them in the wilderness. And he took them through the desert. He spread a cloud over three million souls to keep them from the desert heat. Amen. And he spread a fire at night so the wild beasts wouldn't get them and they could see and wouldn't stump their toe. Glory be to God. He was with them. He led them and he fed them. What a mighty God. You know why? Because he's God. That's the reason he did it. All right. Hear ye the word of the Lord. All right. O house of Jacob. Uh huh. All the families of the house of Israel. And all the families. I want you to hear all the families. All right. Thus saith the Lord. All right. What iniquity have your fathers found in me? Listen. What iniquity have your fathers found in me? God's asking Israel the question. And I say tonight, what iniquity have we found in God that we can't hold a standard in the church of God? What iniquity have we found in God that we can't preach an everlasting gospel? What iniquity have we found in God that we can't hold the truth? He's not going to break his word for nobody. Amen. In, in Psalms 119, he said, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in the heaven. And he said again in the psalm, I'm not going to alter anything that went out of my mouth. What iniquity has he done that makes us think the church of God today that we got to let out the standard for folks we can't afford to do it. God does not change. His standard is still the same. The 
church of God was a church of God before we ever got into it. What iniquity has he done that we can think we can come up here as weak preachers and let our own God stand it? Let this thing go in there. They cut hair. Amen. Short dresses. This thing and the other. Oh, glory to God. What iniquity has he done that we think we can get away with it? All right. What iniquity have your fathers found in me? Mm -hmm. That they are gone far from me. They've gone far from me. Listen, when Allison first started out, she was tender. She was loving. Amen. God remembered her a spouse. The hair wasn't standing. Amen. They were Holy Ghost led. Praise God. Preachers got their messages from God. Amen. They weren't dry. They didn't preach the same message over and over and over. Amen. Without any anointing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. What iniquity have you found in God? All right. You just pray for me now. Lord, help me. All right. Amen. Start it again. You like that, don't you? What iniquity have your fathers found in me? Uh huh. That they are gone far from me. Gone far from me. Listen. She's Church of God Babylon. That's what she is. Women wearing pants, jewelry, halters in the camp meetings. Amen. Going to church half naked. And the devil is trying to bring it over in the church of God in this time. But listen, God said, I've set watchmen on the wall that are not hold their peace. All right. Amen. That they are gone far from me. Yeah. And have walked after vanity. Have walked after vanity. And are become vain. And, and what? And are become vain. And become vain. Amen. What iniquity have you found in God? And gone far from me. That they like to walk, walk, walking after vanity. And have become vain. Preacher standing in the pulpit. Got two wives. It's not so in the church of God. Amen. Let me tell you something. God is still on the throne. God is able to work and bring the men back to their wives. He's able to do it. Amen. That's holiness. That's what it is. Amen. That's holiness. Glory be to God. Amen. Why well, listen, the church of God, when I was a child, they, they, the preachers would not marry you if you had a living companion. Right. They wouldn't do it. Amen. And a real church of God man won't do it today. Amen. What profit is it? What iniquity have you found in God? Have you found any rebellion in God, have we? Amen. The rebellion is in man. It's not in God. Amen. That's not so. All right? Amen. Listen, it's time to call a spade a spade. It's time, praise God, to speak plain. Paul said, knowing the time is, we use plainness of speech. It's time to talk plain. It's time to preach plain. Amen. So people will, you know, when, when judgment goes forth, the people learn righteousness. Amen. Amen. Why, saints of God don't hardly have any fear of God anymore. Get in the choir bare-legged. Go in the choir all barely. That used to not be heard of in the church of God as I knew it when I was a child. And God hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. Oh, yeah, barelegged and almost barefooted. It's the truth. Amen. But you see, you know what? If you cry against things like that, you know what? You're fanatic. Well, Sister Bob was fanatic then. All right now. Amen. That's, I, I am, if that's what you think. I am. Well, haven't they got baseball fans and all kinds? I'm a church of God fan. Amen. All right, now. All right, read. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? Listen, that even lost sight of God. They didn't even say, well, where is the Lord God that brought us out of Egypt? He spread a table in the wilderness when they were doubting and didn't feel like they could. Didn't he do it? Their shoes, praise God, their shoes did not wear out for 40 years. Their clothes, amen, did not wear out. 
They didn't have to go downtown and shop for the mall and sweat and care and try to find something modest. God kept their clothes for 40 years. It wasn't no mall. It was nothing but wilderness. Weren't even his sheep there to make the wool. When God put the clothes on them, they just stayed on them. Only they took them off to wash them. Amen. And little children, they, they put shoes on their feet and on the grown folks' feet. And they were there for 40 years as they grew their shoes grew. Because he is God. Amen. As they ate and got fat, their clothes just filled them. The men didn't go around with tight britches on. Their clothes just fit them because he's God. He can do what he wants to. He can do anything he wants to do. All right. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? All right. That led us through the wilderness. Uh-huh. Through a land of deserts. Listen, that led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts. And pits. And pit, pits were there, but didn't nobody fall in. He was, because he's God. All right. Through a land of drought. Through a land of drought. There wasn't even any water in there. But why did God take them around that way? He did it to prove them. They could have made the journey in 11 days. But it took 40 years. All right. And the shadow of death. And the shadow of death. Through a land that no man passed through. No man had ever tread through the wilderness before the children of Israel went through it. Think about that. All right. And where no man dwelt. And nobody lived there. There weren't any houses there. But oh, when they got over in Canaan, you know what he told them? I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build. And I'm going to give you fruit trees that you didn't plant. Listen, God will do more for us than, he, than we'll let him do. Amen. Amen. You know, you can limit God. You can limit God from doing things far. Did you know that? There weren't any houses in the wilderness. All right. Amen. I brought you. Into a country. And I brought you into a plentiful country where there was grapes and melons and pomegranates. Amen. Amen. Milk and honey. Isn't that wonderful? He brought them to a plentiful land. All right, what'd they do? To eat the fruit thereof and you, the goodness thereof. And he took them over in Canaan and they didn't eat mallow anymore. They ate fruit. And I love fruit. All right. But when you entered my land. And soon you got over there where it was fruitful, you defiled the land. Amen. Listen, the church of God was laid out to us as young people. It was laid out by the ministry preaching a full gospel. Amen. And some people got into it and have defiled the church of God. Amen. Yes, they have. Sure they have. Not enough Holy Ghost rule and different things and that, you know. Sure. Of their own wisdom, on their own mind, twisting the scripture to their own destruction. Saying that means one wife at a time. Who ever heard of such? He didn't read like that. All right. And made my heritage an abomination. And made my heritage of the church abomination. Listen to that. You know what they did? Took away the glory. Took away the glory. But it's going to cost something for us to keep the glory. Did you know it? Yes. You're going to have to be willing to suffer. You're going to have to be willing to your name to be maligned. You're going to have to be willing to be slandered. Yes. You're going to have to be willing to be afflicted. Yes. Amen. Sowing asunder. You're going to have to be willing to go through some hard places. You, as brother was preaching last week, you're going to have to be... Uh, ready to be treated like a dog. Amen. That's right. Slandered. Right. Sure. Your name lies. Lies told on you. You're going to have to be with it. That's right. Several years ago, I was down at a camp meeting. They said that I failed it up singing a special. When I come out of the room, and came under the campground and said, well, we heard you fell dead. I said, I'm alive and, and, and very well. 
see? And that went, I don't know how far that went, it just went all down in the eastern part of the, the state. I tell you, it was gone. Had my cousins crying and calling up and trying to see was I dead. I said, no, I'm alive and doing well. Amen. Sure. Amen. Sure. Listen. It means something to serve God. Listen, to, to, to keep the glory, we're going to have to suffer as preachers. You're going to have to suffer. Even in your own congregation, your parishioners may not understand you. It means something to hold a standard as a pastor. Doesn't it mean something? It means something. But you know what? They'll love you if you'll hold the line. They'll love you. They'll love you for it. Everybody that's honest will love you for it. All right, read. The priest said not, where is the Lord? The, even the priests, which would be a type of preachers today, even the priests didn't even say, where is the Lord? You know why? Because they didn't know. All right. They that handle the word of the law knew, knew me not. Listen, there are folks, there are preachers today handling the law of the word of God and don't even know him. Don't even know him. There's to retain the glory, the ministry is going to have to have a greater discernment. And things going on and on in the church of God and hid and hid and can't nobody find it out till it just break out. There ought to be more discernment. When Peter, when Sister Sapphire and, and, and Brother, whatever his name was, when they came up, Ananias, when they came up just up, trying to look all pious, came up and I sold the land for so much. He said, why did you lie to the Holy Ghost? He didn't let him get away with that lie. We need a greater discernment as preachers. Amen. Well, you can just point the thing out and nail it down so you're not telling the truth and you know you're not. Now come on and, and open up and confess it. And you know what happened? They fell dead, both of them. She didn't even know he, she didn't even know he was dead until Peter told her. And the young people, the young people stood right with the ministry. Did they not? Yeah. Took, took, them, took those people out and buried them. There was no three days burying those folks. They got rid of them quick so the church could roll on. All right. Listen, the pastors also transgressed against him. You know what he said? I've set watchmen on the wall that will not hold their peace. Pastors don't need to hold their peace. They don't need to hold their peace. Amen. Listen, don't you know we're going to the judgment? And if you don't tell folks the truth, the blood will be on your hands. All right. And the prophet prophesied by Baal. Mm -hmm. And walk after things that do not profit. And some are doing that today. Walking after things that do not profit. God help us. God help us. The church of God is a church of holiness. She should be beautiful in holiness. Didn't we sing tonight glorious things are spoken of thee? Old city of God, the home of the free. Talked about the courts. What a blessing the courts were. Amen. The glory, amen, has been hindered by false doctrine, one cleansing doctrine. The glory had been hindered by it. But to keep the glory, we're going to have to preach two works and two cleansings. There's two altars, the brazen and the golden. Amen. To keep the glory, we're going to have to tell it like it is. And not be mealy mouths about it. Not be grinning at these false prophets and false folks. Amen. Tell it like it is. I still believe in two works and two cleansings. I don't care wh what you say. Who says it's one cleansing? Why, man is so filthy, with us three we need it. The sanctuary needs to be cleansed, folks. There are things that are going 
going on that don't profit. That don't profit. It's hiding the glory. Can't you remember the glory we used to have in the camp meeting? Can't you remember, saints? When the word of God, when the preachers were not limited. Amen. When the preachers were not coerced. And some they want to keep out of the pulpit because they think they're fanatic. And I'm one of them. Praise God. Amen. Now, you know, I don't have to be behind a pulpit to preach God's gospel. I can stand out in the aisle and preach. What are you talking? Stand out in the grass. Amen. Stand out, stand up, stand on some weeds tall, just break them down and stand out there and preach an everlasting gospel. What are you talking about? Nothing but a voice anyhow. Amen. Praise God. God knows whether these dry bones are going to live or not. All he wants us to do is prophesy to them. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Name the line. Praise God. If you preach an everlasting gospel, come against worldliness and pride and everything else, they don't want you in the pulpit. They don't want you in there. And you know what? I don't want to be in there either. Not that one. All right. Read. Wherefore I will yet plead with you. I'm going to plead with you. Listen, God is long suffering. I'm going to plead with you. And with your children's children. And I'm going to plead with your children's children. Our Lord, man, he's going down through the generation. He's pleading and pleading. There are some children in the church of God today. That will never know what the standard was years ago. Never will know it. Because the standard is so modernized today. Split skirts. Split skirts. Amen. I've been right on the campground where they had split skirts. Amen. And you get up and cry against something like that. You fanatic. You fanatic. Maybe somebody will come to you and say, well, I don't I, I appreciate your message all over what you said about so-and-so and so. Preachers didn't used to do preachers that way. They used to say, I'm holding your hands up. Holding your hands up. Amen. Listen, we're going, to, we're going to God's heaven. And I'm sure there's no split robes up there. And toes out up there. Hallelujah. Amen. And a Hollywood up there. Amen. A mixed multitude. Amen. This man's child in here and this woman's child in here and that woman's husband is sitting on this side and his wife is his ex-wife is sitting over on this side, passing babies back and forth. What kind of iniquity has God done? That these kind of things would be brought into the church of God. A mixed multitude. It's not so. Not in God's church. Praise God. He said, look. He said, she's fair as a morning. She's clear as a sun. Hallelujah. Glorious things are spoken of her. What are you talking about? Amen. Sitting in the church of God, all of us singing. When we all get to heaven. And several husbands and wives sitting one one couldn't even live together when they were together. And now I got the nerve to sit in the church of God and claim to be saved. It's not so. It's not so. It's not so. It's not so. Amen. Holy, look old brother Isaiah. And he said, I 
keep the wall straight. Amen. The wall is just as straight as it ever was. He told Moses in the wilderness. He said, make it a cart to the pattern. Amen. That you gave in the wilderness. Saints of God, that pattern has not changed. Just 
Well, you prayed through and you saw him. You know, just, no, we need, need, need greater workers at the altar to pray folks through, to get at the root of the matter, to see what's hindering them, why they can't keep an experience, why they backslide so much, this and the other. We need a greater work. Need more fear. All right, a long time ago when I was a child, and people, when well, the world would come to the church of God to get saved, you know what they said? They said, I know what I got to do. Because I know how I see how the saints dress. I know what I got to give up. And they had a basket. I mean, the folks would come to the altar and get saved. They'd take their jewelry, their ear bobs, and they called them ear bobs then. But we say earrings today. Same old thing. Earrings. Rings. Amen. Tie pins. Whatever. They'd throw them right in that basket. Right at the altar. They'd give it up right at the altar. But today, well, you know, you can't take things off of people. You just have to wait on them. And you wait so long until you haven't got enough strength to bring the child to birth. All right? At 13. Go read through 13. Oh, my people. You know who did it? My people have committed two evils. Now, what were they? They have forsaken me for the fountain of living water. Listen, God was the fountain of living water for his people. It was an ever-flowing fountain. It would quench their thirst forevermore. They would never thirst again. And they forsook him. And he was the fountain of the living water. Amen. This is, listen, this is what has happened today. Not enough Holy Ghost rule. If a preacher is somewhat and been preaching for 30 or 40 years and he does something wrong, they'll not expose him like he ought to be exposed. But let me get in the pulpit and preach against uh, preach wariness and, and nearly everybody will settle. Preachers especially. But, an, but a preacher that's been in the way a long time and doing will to see when they've crucified us, they'll cover it up. But little old sister Buck, they'll crash her under her feet. That's what they'll do just for preaching gospel. But let me tell you something. They'll try to do it. But look, somebody been preaching divine healing for years and years and years. And then take medicine. And then still getting up trying to lay judgment on somebody. If that had been this, you know what the six seal ministry would have done with that thing? And the hand and told him said, set up. Set him and expose him and said, look, you, you're not, you, you don't get up and preach and lay down no kind of judgment because you've been a poor example. The six seal brethren would have done it. And the seven seal is supposed to be stronger than they are. There's too much weakness in the ministry. There's not enough sobriety. Joking and slapping one another on the back. And that's the reason they can't be true to one another. Yeah. Need to be more sober. I tell you, the church is sick. She's sick. Praise God, and she needs some Holy Ghost preaching. Said, You've forsaken me. I was a fountain of living water. Glory be to God. When Jesus sat us on the way, and that woman, weary with sin, had had five herdmen. Came to the water with her water pot, empty, tired, sick of sin, worn out from the life she was living. You know what he told her? He said, look, if you knew the gift of God, <laughs> if you knew the gift of God and who it is that's speaking to you, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. This is what needs to be alive. Saints of God need to be more alive. And the straighter the standard, the straighter the preaching, amen, the more glory we're going to have. I'm talking about the glory tonight and what it takes to keep it. That's just what it takes. Ministers be willing to suffer, be willing to be accused, be willing to be cut down, be willing their name to be maligned and talked about. But still, the glory of God rested upon that minister when they preach an everlasting gospel. You know what an old minister told me one time, said Adele, said, look, you just stay hot. They can't stay, said nobody can sit on a hot stove. See, 
If you try to fit on me, you can't do it. If I'm hot enough, glory be to God, you can't sit on a hot stove, can you? If you sit on it, you'll pop right up. Ah, uh, you'll get up. Amen. Praise God. It, you know what he said? He said, and no man has set on you. Burke said that, didn't he? All right, read on, Brother Ron. They have committed two evils. And one of, now back there, they forsook him. And the two evils is committed today is not enough Holy Ghost leadership. Let the Holy Ghost lead in the messages, in the preaching. Amen. That's it. And the other, the other evil, what was it in the Bible that we read? It? They used them out system, uh -huh. broken system. That wouldn't hold any water. Right. Amen. And you know what that is? Listen, that's a type of compromise today. Taking God's law and weaken it down and adulterate it just so certain ones can get in. Hew them out cisterns trying to handle the word of God the way they want to handle it. Making allowances for adultery and this thing and the other. But the word of God still stands. I don't care who does it. The word of God still stands. Amen. When the brethren, the six sealed brethren, when they held the truth like they hold it, glory be to God. Listen, folks come out of wheelchairs and canes and blinded eyes was open. Not enough unity. Not enough unity. Not enough boldness. Not enough trueness. Folks going on and know they need to ask forgiveness. Know they need to humble down. Know they need to sit down and quit preaching for a while. And God have pity on them and raise them up again. Listen, my people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me. They've forsaken me. They've hewn sisters, uh, hewn themselves sisters of their own making and have not, and, and they won't even hold any water. That's reading it's not enough spirit. Not enough spirit. Not enough spirit in the camp meeting. Man, let me tell you something. The camp meeting need to be so hot until the sinners can't even stand in the congregation of the righteous. Can't even stand. Amen. We've had some good camp meetings, and you know we have. When the glory was there, and ministers were free to preach the gospel, and they were free to preach on this thing and other. But you know what? When they began to tighten down, don't want you to preach this thing. Don't want you to preach that thing. You know what happened? The disco shoes come in. The disco shoe, that's worse than toes and heels out. Disco shoe, heels real high, popping and walking like horses. Sounding like horses. Oops. And the ministry had been one on that thing and held that thing. Listen, every time there's been a compromise, it's always been with the women or the children. Every time. It's all with the wedding bands and this thing and the other. And brethren, let me tell you something. If we don't tighten up the standing, if brethren, if we don't preach an everlasting gospel and get on that gospel wagon and tighten up, the jewelry's gonna creep in, the makeup's gonna creep in. The 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 cut has already in. But other things are gonna creep in. But you know what? It'll be abominable heritage when it does it. It'll not be the church of God. Amen. Listen. My people have committed two evils. Let me tell you something. I love that song, Be an Overcomer. Father and Holy Ghost. Holy Remedy. Did you know it? And not just right here. God's got some people. God's got some people, even among those that the, the standard is being lowered. God's got some honest people that love God and want to do right. Amen. Tell you something. It means something to serve God. You hear me? Church of God is something. It's real. It's not Baptist. It's not Methodist. Amen. Amen. He said, my dove, Solomon said, my dove, my undefiled is but one. She's the only one of her mother. There's nothing else like the church of God. And if I can't be church of God, I'm not going to be nothing else. I'd rather be out in sin than to pretend. Listen, God's got to listen. 
we, we just, the word of God is going to weigh these things, you hear me? Now, we're coming to the judgment. We're coming to the judgment. And every deed is going to be made known. And we're going to be weighed in the balance. And I want to be weighed in an even balance, don't you? I thank God for the brethren that we have met and we love them. But let me tell you something. My love isn't so deep that if they're wrong, that I can't cry against it. Uh -uh. No, sir. Amen. Appreciate Brother Carl as my pastor. Amen. But if you let down the stand, I'm going to be against him. You hear me? I don't believe he will. But if he does, <laughs> Sister Brother going to be against it. Don't tell him, Sister Brother, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's Bible. That's Bible. Church Bible. All right, read on. All right. For conclusion, Isaiah 62. One, two, and three. Then drop down to six and then read 10 and 11. Listen, when Isaac was digging wells over there in the 26th chapter of Genesis, he dug the same well that his father dug. Yeah. And the Philistines strove for it. Listen. He held the same line that his father held. We're just preaching the same gospel that was preached to me years ago, and God hasn't changed. I know people say, you're living in a different age, and you know, you just have to be a little more lenient. And listen, it's not so. Listen, young people don't like hypocrisy. They don't like it. That's the reason the hippies came along, because the young folks got sick of their parents professing and, and hypocriting and tearing on. So they let the hair down and, and went with dirty feet and dirty legs and things. Laying out on the ground. They got sick of hypocrisy. And God don't love it today. Let me tell you something. When God entrusts us with the word of God, we better, we better preach it. Young brethren, young ministers. God has entrusted you with the word of God, but you better wield so it. Don't let on for favor for this one or for the other. Because one of the qualifications is to be without partiality. Is that right? Amen. Without partiality. Yes. Amen. Listen. God, our God reigns. And if you're on the Lord's side, he'll take care of you. You don't have to worry. The very ones that have come against you will come back and bow at your feet and say, your God reigns. Didn't he say that something like that in Revelation? He said, they'll come and bow at your feet. Amen. God is still on the throne. Another thing that has crept in, another evil that has crept in among the church of God, prejudice. 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 Amen. On both sides. Amen. Prejudice. Amen. Prejudice. It's brought on an apostasy. It's done it. Amen. Why, well, folks call themselves saints. Look at you funny, just like you're from some strange corner or somewhere. Amen. Listen, prejudice has crept in among the saints of God. Amen. Prejudice has come in among. It has. Amen. It's done it. But God is no respect your person. He knows what's Amen. a person. Amen. We want everything done in decency and in order. Amen. But that thing has crept in among the saints. That's right. All right. Who's reading for a conclusion? Isaiah 62, 1 through 3, 6, and then 10 and 11. This ought to be the pledge of every preacher. This ought to be the commitment of every preacher. This ought to be the allegiance to every preacher. For Zion's sake. Not for my sake or my buddy's sake or my brother's sake. You know, we've we known one another for years. We grew up as boys together. So what? If he veers away, put judgment on him. He'll love you for it. Amen. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. All right. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. I will not rest. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness. Yes, listen. Righteousness is to go forth as brightness. 
And yet we hear the declaration we got more unity than we ever had and more miracles and I don't know where they are. We need more unity than we ever had. But we won't get it if we, if the glory departs. That's the reason I'm preaching like I'm preaching. We don't want the glory to depart. The text, the glory, and what it means to keep it. Need more praying ministers. We sing an hour and a half, pray about ten, five minutes or six minutes. When the six seal brethren, there were times when you, you, you'd have to go and try to find you a tree to pray behind. At three or four o'clock in the morning. The eating lines are getting longer. Not much fasting like it ought to be. Three meals a day and snack bar at night. But there's a law of temperance. Amen. Praise God. Need to be more prayer meetings. The afternoon meetings, people sit up and sleep after eating a big lunch. And you got to be a fiery preacher to keep them awake. I'm telling you, you got to either bang and pound and jump up and down, have something hot off the coals to keep them from snoring. Sitting there with their shoes off and head right back, gone. And supposed to be at the camp meeting. I'm telling you. God save us from dryness, please. God help us. All right, read. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. Listen. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Uh huh. Till the righteousness there go forth as righteousness. Listen, God wants righteousness to go forth from the church of God. Amen. There is some effort being made, but there needs to be a greater effort because we're nearer the end now than we were ten years ago. It's been nine, it's been eight years since the heresy of the one cleansing came in. It's been eight years. And we certainly need to be further up the road than what we are. John in the 14th chapter of Revelation, he said, I saw a lamb standing on Mount Zion. This is where the church should be perched, right there. All right. And the salvation thereof as the lamb did burn. All right. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. All right. All kings thy glory. All kings thy glory. The kings of the earth thy glory. All right. Drop down to six. I have set watchmen upon thy I set them up there. It seemed to be just one gift in the church anymore. And that's preaching. And you can have two wives and go with your Bible and hey, who's got the message? I got it. And the six seal brethren, you know what they used to do? If you didn't have the message, they'd write your note. And if that didn't do, they'd sing you down. If that didn't do, they'd call you down. But they had so much fear on them. Time a few set on them, they'd come down and be glad to come down. It, there ought to be more of a fear in the ministry. So, brother, I have some thoughts, but to just definitely have the message, I don't have it. I don't have it. There need to be more fear. And I don't like to preach when I get on the campground. When they ask me, I say, well, now, uh, I'm strange. I don't like to preach when I get right on the ground because I, I don't know what the atmosphere is. I got to pray. I got to see here. I got to see what's going on here. I want to hear from heaven. I don't want to just get up. I sure I got thoughts. A preacher ought to be always ready to preach or say something. But at the same time, an anointed message is something different. Is it not, brethren? All right. Said, I have set watchmen where? Upon thy wall. Upon thy wall. Which shall never hold their peace. Never hold their peace. Day nor night. And you know what? 
They are watchmen today, see things. But don't tell it till after it's exposed. Well, I, I, I saw something or I felt like something was wrong. Why, sure, anybody can do that after it's open and after the thing is bursted open. But you should see it before it happened. All right? He that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. The Lord don't want the ministry to keep silence. This is what brought the silence in heaven when there wasn't enough crying against the wrong. All right? But he said that they are never holy peace. Never. All right? Drop down to the tent. Go through. Go through the gate. Right. Prepare ye the way of the people. Uh huh. Cast up, cast up the highway. Mm -hmm. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Get the people sanctified. Need to more, need more preaching on sanctification. Because I was reading over in Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter, it said all the priests were sanctified. We got some unsanctified preachers preaching. That's right, preaching dry messages. We got some unsanctified preachers preaching. Amen. And how you know they're unsanctified? Because when anything come up, they show their carnality. Show their carnality. That's right. Amen. He said, listen, go through, go through the gates, lift up a standard for the people. Message is dry. Have to call for amens. I don't want to call for no amen. All I want you is hear me. You know I don't see you. And so far, all I want you is hear me. And if the Lord put an amen on you, all right. But if you hear me, that's good enough for me. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the beautiful church of God. She's just as beautiful as she ever was. Lord, help us tonight not lose sight of her beauty. Oh, God, let there be more sanctification, more holiness around here, more godliness, more sincerity, more of the anointing of the God. The very presence being in our midst when we sing, when we preach, when we pray. Lord, we don't want any dead stones in the building. If there's anyone here tonight need any help, may, may they get it. May God give it to them. And we thank you. Thank you for the reading. Thank you for your prayers. God bless you.